I started teaching, and uh, the very first, it, so I was terrified because I'd never taught before, but it was a, it was a new course, so it was only first years, and I thought, I'll, I must know more than a first year. Actually, there were some first years, I think, that were up, up to speed with me at the time. But I did have some experience, and I remember standing in front of the first years and saying, you know, it's really important that you have a project that you're interested in doing for yourselves, and, um, and I can't tell you what that is, but something that's got to be, get you out of bed in the morning with a spring in your step, if you like, yeah, you know, yeah. something you're passionate about. And I realised while I was saying this that I wasn't actually doing that myself, mm. you know? I'd only been spent the last three years working for other people. Yeah. And um, so... Um, I, I like when you're talking, I like the fact that Kodak is basically... Yes. Sort of making that little noise yes. in the background. Yes, what Kodak, about me? Kodak being your dog and I know. basically joining us today. I love that. I think it's really sweet. Oh, come on, Kodak. Oh, sweetheart. You're going to stay there. <laughs> stay you stay there. there. Get in your basket. In your basket. This will be edited out. So I realised that I wasn't... Um, you know, I, I felt like I had to lead by some kind of example. Uh, and so I went, I went back home and took out of a drawer a, a tea towel that I'd bought from a Royal National Lifeboat Institute shop in Great Yarmouth, which show, was a map of the sea areas in the shipping forecast program, mm. uh, radio show. And, um, and I'd bought it about three years before, sort of pretty gobsmacked by this idea that these locations that meant, you know, were so deep within my imagination, my psyche, if you like, and so many other people's, that they were really real ge geographical locations. Of course they were. Mm. I, you know, if you think about it, of course, Sea Area Dogger is, a, is somewhere, but I never really thought about it. And so I, I got this tea towel out and I looked at it and I thought, I know what I'll do, I'll go to all of those 31 sea areas and I'll see if what I find there, the reality of what I find, is anything like the imaginary landscapes that had built up in my head since childhood, really. Yeah. Because the program, the, the shipping forecast had always been on in my life, you know. We yeah. always listened to the, the home service, which is what it used to be, and then it moved to Radio 4, so it was always on in the background. Mm. And so like a lot of people, it didn't, you know, it wasn't something I, even though I was interested in sailing, I was, it was only dinghy sailing. So the, the language of the, for, the shipping forecast didn't mean anything to me. It's, yeah, it's very poetic. It's, 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 very fa it's very poetic. What's fascinating about it is that it's in English, but it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a little, it always reminds me of Eric Morecambe who said, you know, I'm paying, playing all the right notes. <laughs> while holding Andre Previn yeah, yeah, by, yeah. The, by the lapels. I mean, I'm paying all the right no playing all the right notes, but not necessarily in the right order, mm. you know. And it's like that idea of it's, 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 it's esoteric, it's, it's mm. sort of tricky, and you can only understand it if you need to understand it. And because of that, the language is very beautiful. Of course, yeah. And um, so I, I set off, you know, locally, first of all, trying to work out a kind of language that I wanted to use in the, in the work. And, uh, so Tony Ray Jones is a big influence. Um, yeah, early I mean, Martin Parr work was a, an influence. Um, Chris Killip, uh, um, you know, I was aware of. Um, I mean, it's interesting. Can I can I uh, can I stop you there? Because I looked at the book again. I didn't open the book quite for quite a long time since you came in, to Guernsey in 2012. And looking at through all your books in doing this research for this for this interview. I mean, you can, you can see now the difference, the evolution of Mark Power in terms of photography. And when I looked back at the, at the photo, when I opened the book, it was like going back to meet a, a friend, a friend that we know for a very long time. But I've noticed something, and again, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's relevant, so forgive me if it's not. I'll try and answer this in the affirmative, of course. <laughs> but there's a, uh, your approach of photography was very much closer in terms of in terms of portraits, for example, mm. than any other book that you've done, and there's a, a, a there's a lot of children as well mm. in your in your in your in your photo, which is interesting because my memory of the shipping forecast as a book when I first opened it was when you think when you when you when you think about it, it's a it's you think that it's a landscape and, and there's there's a lot of landscape, but there's also a very much uh, Mark Power meeting people, getting close to people, which is 
can I think, which is quite unusual for your for your work when you compare with what you've yeah. done and what you're doing now. Yeah. So were you well, aware of that, or were you were you trying to apply a specific style again? Or, uh, or? Uh, that's a long question. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Well, first of all, uh, I wasn't meeting people. There's only one person, one picture in the book, where I actually spoke to anyone. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, uh, so from that point of view, very little has changed because... Yeah, you know, still it's a a, you're still a, it's a shy terrible, person. Yeah, it's a terrible thing to say, but it's the same thing applies to me today. If I can get through a whole day without speaking to anyone while I'm working, it's been a good day. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a photographer because I like to engage with people. I'm not, you know... Mm. Um, uh, the, the yes, there are more people in the pictures. Uh, because uh, that was the kind of thing I was I, I liked at the time. Those kind of pictures of weather, but it was also a handheld camera. I think that's very important to understand. Mm. It was a Mamiya Six. It was very fluid. I could work very fast. Yeah. Uh, and and also I was interested in the idea of the forecast as 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 listened to by other people like myself. I wasn't interested in photographing the forecast from the point of view of fishermen or sailors. Mm. So children playing on the beach or you know, parents or whatever, that was all very much a part, of, a part of that sort of ordinariness. But also I think that, I mean, a lot, I say a lot's been written, it sounds like people have done PhD theses about this, but they have, you know, it's best of my knowledge they haven't. But people have mentioned this children, lonely children, and, and asked if I was a lonely child, and I think, you know, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that's yeah. something to do with it. But it I is mean, very autobiographical. And I think if there is That's a thread right that goes thought, through yeah. all of my work, I think it's, um, it's about this imagined landscape, or imagined imagination of a child about the yeah. world out there. Everything I've done has been about that, I think. Everything that I've done which has, has meant something to yeah. me has been about this idea of marrying this remembrance of things as I thought they were, and then the disappointment of finding them to be quite different. Of course, yeah. Which is, so, which, yeah. so I think, you know, if ever I did have a retrospective, I think there would, and, and, uh, there would be a, a, a theme that you could see through the work, even if stylistically it, it did change, change a lot after move, the shipping forecast. Normal, because I mean. while I was making the shipping forecast, particularly towards the end, uh, I was looking at a lot of German and American large format work. Mm. And I was really quite bored of making this work with a square black and white, you know. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very, di it's, it's a, it's a, it was a decision I made to, to use that kind of language, if you like. Mm. Mm. But a square is a very difficult format to work with. I mean, I think, you know, there's certain tricks you can use and then you end up repeating yourself over and over and over again because, you, you know, it's just... <laughs> there's yeah. not much width, there's a lot of sky and a lot of ground and it's, you know, it's difficult. <coughs> I so I felt I bled myself dry with that camera and I had to leave it behind and it was probably a stupid thing to do because it was a very successful book and a very successful project. It sold 10,000 copies for goodness sake, which is Amazing. unbelievable for a first book. Amazing. Uh, because it got out of the photography ghetto of, you know, yeah. five to seven hundred copies you might be uh, expected to sell because it reached other, other people who were interested in other things without dumbing down. It's still a serious photo book. Mm. Um, there's but I, 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 I left it all behind and started yeah, yeah. working in a very different way. Yeah, there's a beautiful text also writ written by David Chandler yes, uh, as is. an introduction text. We talked about um, the British identity, so looking for British identity versus the, uh, the, uh, your own memories of trying to find the British identity, but also to go through your, through your memory uh, mm. as well. Mm. Do you think it still apply now? Because I feel like the same apply now in your in your work there's there's, a, there's an element of looking for british identity yeah, yeah. Uh, and and still sort of having a space for the fantasy or not the fantasy but the 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 the, the, the memory or, or or the imagination mm. of i mean we will talk about the american landscape for example which is yeah. very much linked to your to your childhood yes, as yes, well yes 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 yeah that's absolutely true i mean everything goes back to that uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if I was a particularly imaginative child, but I was quite, as I, I don't want to bang on about being lonely, but I did spend, spend a lot of time on my own thinking about things yeah. and, and imagining another world out there. And, and I think it's not something that I, I, 
I'm not kind of some kind of archaeologist who's trying to use this again and again and again. I think it just comes very naturally to me that, uh, and I'm not, I, you know, here I am sitting talking to you about myself, but I don't, I'm not trying to say that my work is about, you know, all about me. I, I mean, my, my work is much more about the things that I encounter. Mm. But underpinning the whole thing for me, you know, inside is this idea of, of going back to, the imagination. What what is imagining a landscape, imagining a kind of place yeah. that doesn't really exist at all. 